Hey everybody, Josh here. Another episode in our series of some of the lesser known and maybe say underappreciated or maybe not at all appreciated components in the Silka lineup. This one has a little bit of an interesting history lesson behind it. And um, it's fitting that I'm wearing my new Silka Tour de France combined jersey uh, t-shirt. And I'll let you know why here in a second. So combined jersey, if you follow well, off and on from the 60s up into the late 80s, uh, and it was sort of a weird points classification thing of if you were you know top three for the yellow, the polka dot, the green, uh, you kind of got there was this weird numbering system. It was very French. Um, you, you think it was like one point for first, two points for second, three points for third, and then whoever was lowest was the best. It was a very strange deal. Um, very confusing to people as it ended up. But it had this great jersey that was uh, this, part yellow, part polka dot, part green, part white. Um, I don't know if we showed the white one on the car, but uh, a little bit strange. It, the jersey went through, I think, 87, 88, maybe as far as 89. Um, and then they got rid of it. Uh, look it up. Great images out there. Some great years of Bernardino and Greg LeMond uh, racing each other, you know, kind of the years where they were killing each other and, and swapping this jersey in the yellow and uh, good times. But let's anchor ourselves in that time period because this is right about the time that over in Italy, in Milan, um, Silca is developing the what we believe to be and have been told to be the first ever bicycle uh, CO2 inflator. And they called it the EOLO, E-O-L-O, -O, Italian for wind. Um, and we actually have one right here. This is an original 1987-88, uh, most likely, Silca EOLO inflator. Um, pretty cool little part. This was a essentially a plumbing fitting, uh, a brass casting with a little plastic knob. It used a classic Silka gasket under the little brass head here. It's kind of a, I mean, it's a very kind of plumbing-esque piece of hardware. And uh, yeah, you would screw your CO2 in this end, press it on the valve and use this little knob here to control your gas flow. Um, I mean, pretty novel, 87. 88, give or take, probably in the U.S. market by 89. Um, you know, things just moved a little bit more slowly by then. But, you know, Silco was the inflation brand, particularly the floor pump brand in the U.S. and, and was really a powerful player in the U.S. market. So um, this was really designed. And my understanding from the stories was that this really came at the request of the U.S. distributor that they needed a better portable um, inflation product as because frame pumps were going away, right? You think of up until the, the mid 80s, everybody had a frame pump, um, but it was pretty clear that mini pumps and CO2s were gonna replace that. And so here's what they came up with. Um, you cannot feel it through the camera, but I gotta say this thing weighs a ton. <laughs> um, solid brass. So we found, actually at a, a shop gave this to me, uh, 1997 original packaging. I mean, look at the yellowing on that plastic. Um, let's see if I can get it open without popping. But we found and were given by a dealer uh, this guy. So still called Yolo One, but let's look at the difference here. Um, rather than the Made in Italy and the Silca being embossed in the casting itself, um, it actually has these two little debossed kind of depression areas that they have fitted in little clear plastic stickers with the Silca and Made in Italy branding. So sort of an interesting you know, thing that I think about, um, you see also there's a difference in the inflation knob. This one has a hole, this one doesn't. So clearly at some point they would have had a change of vendors um, or, or some reason for making that change to the little casting tools because they're very similar, but they're quite different. So no idea the history on that has been lost. Uh, no real idea what happened there, but um, clearly something changed in those 10 years. So we go 87 to 97, we get to 2007, and the company uh, has developed what is called EOLO 2. And you see here on the back, EOLO 2, I also found this in a bike shop. Um, and EOLO 2, to my knowledge, was one of the first uh, CO2 products out there to use what we would call a spool valve. And what's cool about the spool valve is that, uh, so you would 
thread your CO2 in here and puncture it. Let's go ahead and thread it in. So if you were to take this part away, and actually let's just throw a CAD model up. I'll, I'll draw that as soon as I'm done shooting this video. But you see the spool valve looks like a spool of thread, has a couple of O-rings, um, and then essentially when it's in this sprung out position, extended position, um, the gas flow is going into a zone between two O-rings that's dead. There's no orifice for gas to, to transfer. Uh, when you push down on it, right, or up on it or whatever, when you depress it, the spool slides into a second zone of the spool where you have an orifice between the two O-rings. And so this is pretty clever. This thing, you know, weighs probably somewhere in the 40-ish gram range. It's much lighter. It's aluminum. Um, it can handle Presta and Schrader. Um, this guy rotates easily to thread on, which is a nice feature. And then once it's threaded onto the valve, you essentially just push it, and that's how you activate the gas. It was a pretty simple system, and I think this worked pretty well. Fairly well-received product, so much so when I bought the company in 2014, um, we lost really all of the original Italian manufacturing was gone. You know, company was... Uh, essentially bankrupt, and we were able to just purchase the trademark. So really, most of the manufacturing uh, was lost to us. We were able to keep the leather gasket maker, uh, the brass uh, spilo, the, the brass check valve maker, uh, but all of the other producers uh, didn't want to do business with the company anymore, and in some cases were you know, owed money by the company. And so we, we took all the manufacturing stateside, and we developed what we called EOLO 3, which you see is the same idea, but it's about 15, 20% smaller, lighter weight. Uh, we added the three uh, urethane O-rings. One, it gives you a nice Italian flag uh, appearance, but also it gives you a little bit of uh, insulation from the cold, right? That, you know, these things get cold when you let the gas out, but we did maintain the same spool valve concept. You know, it can thread on, you press it uh, to let the gas out, works pretty well. Fairly simple little guy. Well, this was pretty good. Not everybody likes this style of valve, and we certainly found a lot of customers didn't understand how to use it. Um, people wanted the knob, and so we decided uh, about two years ago to go back to a knob style uh, actuator valve on the EOLO, and we developed what we now call EOLO 4. And so you thread this guy on, he handles Presta or Schrader. You can see he spins freely, so you can thread him on if you want, um, or you can just press him on your Presta, and then you have a twist knob to actuate the gas, okay? I mean, in a lot of ways, if you look, look at the similarities. It's really just, I, I think, a, <laughs> a modernization of the part, a um, little bit cleaner designed, all aluminum versus brass and plastic. Um, this guy only weighs, I think, about 25 grams. He's super lightweight, little parts, super compact, so it is just not taking up uh, a bunch of space in your pack. Um, but it does give you the, I would say, the ease of use, the obviousness of use for people who've never used one before of the valve. You know, we even do the little laser etch closed, <laughs> closed and open. Um, and it gives you really nice gas flow control. Uh, in that guy. So there you go. Over the years, he's probably come down in weight by, I don't know, eight times. Uh, gotten to be about half the size um, as he used to be. And uh, yeah, just kind of a fun little guy. It's fun to keep, kind of keep that history alive. You can see the lineage, you know, 1987 to 2024 and, uh, you know, 2027 and beyond, most likely. Um, with this guy. I will add one more, and I think we talked about it last week in our tire lever video, um, but we do also have what we call the EOLO lever, and this guy is essentially a little different action than this, but um, it is a CO2 regulator integrated into the end of a tire lever, and this guy is different in that he's got the same uh, kind of rotatable uh, interface to the valve, so Presta or Schrader, you can screw them on, uh, if you want, and then you screw your CO2 in, and on this guy, what's different, and we've laser etched it on here as well, you screw it fully down to puncture, and then you unscrew slightly to open the valve. Um, essentially what's happening in there is there's an orifice that when he's fully punctured, the puncture uh, tube breaks through the top. 
it's smushing an O-ring to cover that orifice. And so as you back him off a little bit, that O-ring is pulling back, the orifice opens, the gas can flow, and then if you want to shut him off, you tighten it back down again. So it's a little, can be a little bit counterintuitive, but it allows us to fit a ton of functionality into a super tiny little space. So there you go. I want to make sure I got that explanation out of the way. But uh, yeah, so there you go. I want to hear your thoughts, comments, questions. Um, who of you out there had one of these in 87 through 97? <laughs> who, who out there still has one of these? Um, I know I accumulated this one from a customer who sent it in, uh, wondering if we had one and we didn't at the time. And then this other one we found at a shop still in its new packaging. But uh, yeah, share with us what you've got out there. Questions, comments, drop them below. Please remember, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.